Welcome to the Great Basin Smoke Dispersion Briefing for Friday, October 27th. This is Gina McGuire. Over the last two weeks, we've seen precipitation mainly focused across Idaho, with some precipitation also in the Sierra and much lighter amounts into parts of northern Nevada and Utah, with very dry conditions over the southern half of the Great Basin. However, most of this precipitation south of Idaho has been well below normal for the time of year, and up in the central Idaho mountains is where we've seen near to just above normal precipitation. Also looking at snowfall over the last 72 hours, the image on the left shows the only snowfall that's been really reported over the last three days has occurred over the northern slopes of the Uinta Mountains in northeast Utah. Looking at the snow depth, we have a little bit of snow still over in northeast Utah and in central Idaho, and still a somewhat good snowfall over parts of Wyoming. Looking at the current fuel conditions, after this very dry period, we've also seen very warm temperatures across the Great Basin. Many areas haven't reported some of their fuel conditions, but in areas of the southern half of the Great Basin is really what we're looking at as these very dry and warm conditions have allowed fuel moistures, now ERCs, to rise above the 70th and even 80th percentile. Looking at our 10-hour fuel moistures, you can see again very dry conditions with fuel moisture in the 3 to 4 percentile range over the southern half of the Great Basin and still even very low 10-hour fuel moistures further north across much of Nevada and Utah. And again, we also still have a very good grass crop from winter last year that's carried over through the summer over northern Nevada into northern Utah and southern Idaho. And it's these areas especially after very warm and dry periods, if we do see starts, we could see fires grow to a few hundred acres, which is what we have been observing over the last week or two. Looking at 100-hour fuel moisture, again, still critically dry, especially over the southern third of the Great Basin, and really dry up until you get north into Idaho. The satellite loop from this morning shows strong high pressure along the west coast, keeping sunny skies and warm temperatures for the time of year across much of the Great Basin. We do have a stronger cold system that's dropping south across the central plains, and this will cause some breezy north winds across the eastern half of the Great Basin, especially in the higher terrain, as we go through the next day or two. Now looking at the weather for later today, that ridge of high pressure remains strong along the west coast with very dry conditions and low relative humidity over the southern and western half of the Great Basin. We do have some northerly winds, again, on the backside of that area of low pressure dropping into the northern plains and this will allow for breezy winds in the higher terrain especially but that will also allow for good dispersion across many areas of the eastern half of the Great Basin again especially in the higher terrain. However further west underneath that ridge of high pressure will have poor dispersion across much of Idaho into Nevada. Looking at the transport winds and mixing heights, transport winds again under that ridge fairly light over the western half to two-thirds of the Great Basin but you can see these breezy winds, especially in the higher terrain of the central Utah mountains up into the northern Wasatch and also into the Uintas and parts of Wyoming, where we will see wind gusts between 30 and 40 miles per hour. Mixing heights will also remain relatively low over the western half of the Great Basin and quite good over eastern areas. As we move into Saturday, this ridge moves a little bit further east, so we will have those dry conditions really dominating much of the Great Basin, along with somewhat lighter wind flow, especially over the western half of the area, and again, poor dispersion under that ridge. We will still have better dispersion over parts of Utah, the Arizona Strip, and southern Nevada, especially in the higher terrain. Looking at the winds and mixing height on Saturday, again, very light winds across much of the Great Basin. We will have some breezy winds still over parts of central and northern Utah into Wyoming, but winds on Saturday will be weaker than what we will see today. Also mixing heights, again relatively low over the western half of the area and a little bit higher as you go further south and east. As we move into Sunday, we have a weak area of low pressure off the southern California coast, really not impacting the Great Basin much, but we do have another area of low pressure dropping south into the northern plains, so that will again shift winds up into Idaho and Wyoming to the north and northwest. Near that area of low pressure is where we'll see good dispersion with those slightly breezier winds over Idaho and Wyoming and poor dispersion further south. Temperatures will remain warm along with this pattern as the ridge stays in place. Temperatures will be 10 to 15 degrees above normal over parts of the Great Basin through much of the weekend and will be cooling as we go into next week. On Sunday, again, as those winds increase over Idaho and Wyoming, you can see the strongest winds over Wyoming into parts of far northern and northeast Utah, where gusts will be between 30 and 40 miles per hour, with wind direction out of the northwest and westerly direction. Also, back across Idaho, northeast Nevada, we'll have somewhat breezy winds, certainly stronger than we have been seeing this week. Mixing heights, 
will remain relatively high in the north and relatively low over the western half of the area. If we look at the clearing index forecast for Utah, you can see again looking at today first clearing indices will be fairly low over the northern half of the area and definitely higher in the higher terrain and over the southern portions of the state as we see those breezier winds today with similar conditions on Saturday. By Sunday we will see winds generally lighten up in most areas with the exception of the northern Wasatch into the Uintas where we will see higher clearing indices but elsewhere across the state generally low to moderate. Looking at the overall forecast amount of precipitation for the next three days, we may see a little precipitation up into Wyoming and parts of eastern Idaho as that systems drops to, system drops down later in the weekend, but until then, dry conditions across the Great Basin. Now looking into early next week, we will start to see a pattern change as we go towards the middle of the week, but still relatively warm and dry on Monday, although temperatures will be coming down a little bit from what we have been seeing this week to around 5 degrees above normal across the Great Basin. We will also have fairly good dispersion in most areas of the Great Basin. By Tuesday we see a system drop south and this will possibly bring a weak front and some precipitation to the southern half of Utah, far southern Nevada and the Arizona Strip as we go through the day on Tuesday with generally some rain showers expected. We'll also have good dispersion in that area and we'll have poor dispersion further north up into western Idaho and northern Nevada as that ridge of high pressure off the coast is still pushing east and influencing that area with dry weather, warm conditions, and also relatively light winds. As we go into Wednesday, we have a stronger system now finally dropping south into the northern Rockies, and this will bring some clouds and possibly some precipitation to the central Idaho mountains, along with starting to see a little bit more cooling across the Great Basin with temperatures near normal. We will see poor dispersion over the southern half of the area, really in most of the Great Basin with generally lighter winds, and we will see good dispersion further north into Idaho and Wyoming as that system drops south and winds pick up. As we move into Thursday, that system really starts to finally drop south. We'll see better chances for precipitation over the northern third of the Great Basin with still dry conditions further south and better ventilation in the north and poor dispersion still further south. As we look at the overall forecast amount of precipitation, that system that drops south on Tuesday, again, will bring us some wetting rains over parts of the southern half of the Great Basin. Uh, most areas will only see light showers, but we could see some amounts near or above a quarter of an inch. Looking at the 8 to 14 day outlook, generally cool conditions return to especially the northern half to two thirds of the Great Basin with above normal precipitation as we go into later in the first week of November. This pattern change will settle in and we'll likely see more unsettled weather as we go through the early portion of November. That concludes our briefing for today. Check back on Monday for the latest updates. Thanks for listening.